Kenny here with Guarding Simplified. Today we're going to do a little video on uh, freeze drying beets from start to finish. So let's get into it. When it comes to freeze drying beets, first thing you're going to have to do is uh, we just twist the tops off, cut the roots, and then we uh, scrub them, get the dirt off. Now we've got some water here. We're fixing to put these in here. And we'll heat this up, and we're going to uh, boil them here for 25 minutes. So she'll finish up this. And then after that, it'll be easy to peel them. Okay, after you uh, cook them for 25 minutes, now we're just going to take the skin off. And you can see, of course, they're still a little warm. We've got them in some cold water. But the skin just uh, slips right off at that. Now, when you do these, of course, you're going to have some bleeding from the turnips, but you don't want to cut the ends off until af after you do this because that way it keeps more of the color inside of it. But this would be where you uh, take and uh, you peel them and then cut off any places that uh, there might be problems, you know, cut the the tops off, make sure the root ends cut off good, and uh, then we'll prepare them for putting in the trays. We've now that we've got them all peeled, uh, it's time to uh, cut them up like you want them. Now we're just using our little handy dandy chopper here because uh, we kind of like the little French fry look. If they get to be real thick, what we'll do is, uh, and you can see, that that gives them a size that they'll easily uh, dry. But if they get to be uh, real thick so they won't be too long, we'll just cut them in half, some of the bigger ones, and uh, go that way. But uh, we'll get the rest of these cut up and get them on the trays. All right, we got some chopped up, and they look so beautiful on the trays. These are the golden beets. Now, for those of you don't, that don't know between the golden beets and the and your regular uh, dark beets, of course, there's probably a little flavor difference in the dark ones, too. But the uh, golden beets don't have that strong, earthy taste. They're a lot sweeter, and uh, I like them in salad. Uh, these might make a good uh, snack once they're freeze-dried. We'll see how that goes. But uh, they they would be, you know, just with them uh, freeze-dried and put them directly into a salad. I think they'd give a little crunch. Now, what we're going to do, we have, actually, we have a replacement uh, freeze-dryer. We had so much problems with the other one, and we'll probably do a video on all that ordeal. But uh, And we upgraded, we, we went ahead and bought us a, the premium pump so we wouldn't have to service it as often and it's still a little bit quieter but anyway what we're going to do and this is just set uh we'll show in the customize here it's set all to the standard uh setting so it should uh cut down on the time and we're just going to start this and what this is going to do is set to cool down for 15 minutes for those who aren't familiar with it Okay, it's cooled down. Now, we only have four trays. We didn't have enough for five, and we're not going to worry about putting five. It'll just take a little less time. Now, these red ones are just so beautiful, too. Uh, now, it's going to be load up the freeze dryer. And like I say, this is a replacement one. This is uh, not a used one. It's a replacement. And hopefully, uh, we'll successfully, now we're just going to push continue and let it get after it. So hopefully everything will work right, and we'll see you in a bit. Okay, we've completed the process here. It's taken about uh, 35 and a half hours, just a little over. I have warmed the trays, so uh, we're going to take, and I've drained the vacuum off, 
<clears throat> and I've actually tested to make sure that, that these were dry and the flavor is uh, fantastic on either. So they would make an excellent snack just like they are. But what I'm going to do is we're going to put these uh, in some jars. <clears throat> now I've got some 300 uh, CC oxygen sensors and I've got uh, my setup here so that I can uh, start filling my jars. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these trays and we're just going to uh, <clears throat> put them off in here. They should separate fairly well. And if they don't, it won't matter, but they do uh, separate pretty good. And we'll do our golden beets first. Uh, the, you can really taste the flavor difference. And it, like I said earlier in the, in the process, <clears throat> we'll wait to shut that off until we get that last tray out. But <clears throat> I, I talk about flavor because these, these beets here, they're so much milder, uh, the flavor is. So they're, so if you don't like that strong, earthy flavor, and plus they're sweeter than, than the others, and, and they really make a great snack. Well, I've kind of changed up my process here with my things, and I... I have uh, started putting the oxygen absorber in the bottom because then when I start using the product, I don't have to keep sticking it back in there. It'll kind of be out of the way until we get finished. Now, always keep your oxygen absorbers in a, a container till you're uh, ready to put them in a, a jar. but we're just going to put these in here and we're going to do our best to, to shake them down that way we maximize what's going into the jar uh, and you can fill these right up right up to the top you don't need to leave any space between there then once you get them full just put the lid on and start with the next one you, you always want to take and sample make sure your uh, product whatever uh, your freeze drying is completely dry in the center and and that's where normally I say get you a uh, one of your thicker ones or one from in the middle and take and uh, sample it. Now sometimes you can just tell when you touch it because you can feel the moisture in it but some sometimes it's not quite that simple but but you want to make sure and make sure your your lid is on tight. This is not like when you're canning. Uh, when you can, you uh, don't want to really snug down your lid. But when you're uh, putting something in a jar, and jars aren't for as long term of storage. Uh, it's more short term. Uh, normally, whenever we do something at the beginning of our uh, season gardening season we'll do some in in jars and then after uh after we get further along in the season we'll take and uh 
start doing it in mylar when we get uh, a bunch of extra because you <laughs> your your jars pretty much and i'm not going to suggest that you, you do it but we do a lot of times we'll use reuse some of our our lids because uh when we're when we're doing them uh for freeze drying it doesn't press down the seal like when you're doing for tanning so so uh usually they they do real good for reusing it's easy to tell on most of them if it if it isn't uh making a good seal because because the uh it won't pull a vacuum on it the oxygen absorber when it takes the air out of it a lot of times it takes and and pulls a vacuum on your your lid and so you can tell you've got a, a really good seal and depending on what you want to do now with these we don't want to force them and, and pack the a whole lot in the jar so we're we're going to uh <clears throat> we'll just shake them down so that way we've got nice pretty and these these would be excellent in a salad or <clears throat> you could actually rehydrate them and and cook them which as far as <clears throat> there's there's really no need to <clears throat> spend any time cooking except just warming them up but anyway let me finish this up and there you go here's the process it's all done and just aren't those aren't those beautiful they just uh and they'll sit in here for years they say uh three to four years now that they're always cons uh, conservative on their estimates uh, but anyway there you go you know you can freeze dry beets in your uh freeze dryer and they don't have to be cut like this it's just the way that we prefer you could slice them just like normal uh when you can beach normally i just find they fit in the jars better this way uh, if you're going to do mylar you know that's an option too but anyway if you want to see uh, more you know what to do and i always say enjoy that gardening experience